howdy everybody, welcome back to the railroad. It's finally time to lay some track. I'll start off by saying thanks for tuning in again as always, even though it's been quite a while here. All this footage was actually filmed in January and February, and I'm just getting around to sharing it with you guys now, so apologies for the lack of leaves on the trees here, but I've been staying quite busy, and uh, also documented several other projects around the railroad that will soon have their own videos here as well. This process really just begins with a whole lot of digging in the dirt. It's super important to have the ground below the track solid and level, so I started out by digging a path significantly wider than the rail bed. The ties are going to be roughly 9 inches long, so the rail bed's going to be just over a foot wide, so I'm digging roughly a 3 foot wide stretch. You'll see I also dig one side slightly deeper, so that if any water pools below the ballast, it'll flow away from the ties and down towards the drainage underneath my trestle bridge. My goal is really just to dig down below any roots to thoroughly clear the weeds and vegetation, and to remove all of the porous topsoil. The dirt I'm working with is actually really tough clay, so you'll see me using a variety of tools to chip away at the hillside, break up the chunks, and work the ground into more manageable grades around the right of way. For the beginning of this project, I've opted to use bag ballast for a few reasons. I don't have the site of my future gravel pile cleared yet, and since I want to keep the lawn surrounding the shop spur intact, I figured moving and pouring bagged ballast is just much easier right now than slopping a truck bed's worth all over my grass. For most of the railroad, I do plan to lay a weed barrier mat, however, since this is just my shop spur, I actually want this siding to visually look like the oldest and most abused track on the railroad, and I'm okay with the lawn slightly disguising this spur eventually. Once I'm fairly satisfied with the contours of the ground, I'll begin to hand tamp a solid path for the roadbed. I'll go over this several times, slowly adding dirt to the low spots and creating a nice level plane for the upcoming load of ballast, and eventually the ties. So it's hard to show you guys the natural gradient of this hill on camera, but the upcoming mainline cut is going to be pretty significant. Uh, at least two and a half to three feet deep in a couple places, even maintaining that one and a half percent upgrade into the hill. Now, I have a couple thoughts about this. Doing it all by hand is going to be a heck of a lot of work. I've started doing it by hand. I don't know if I can promise you guys that the cut will all be made by hand. I definitely might rent an excavator or some sort of small equipment to help me with this task. But it's been super fun and rewarding thus far to do this cut all by hand. And it'll be a really nice grade for the equipment, waking up for a day's run coming out of the shop. Uh, they'll have a nice, right about 500 foot stretch, up a 1.5% upgrade to, uh, to wake up that fire, get everything burning good, burning hot, and, uh, and ready for the day's run. So ultimately this will be a great thing, it's just going to be a heck of a lot of work to get there. So while I'm working and getting ready to drop this first track section into place, I figured it might be a good time to tell you guys why I'm starting with 4 and 3 quarter inch gauge, and maybe even explain the gauges and the scales to those viewers who may not be as familiar with the hobby. So when you hear someone referring to the gauge of locomotives and rolling stock, they're talking about the distance between the outside of the wheel flanges, or to put that more simply, the distance between the rails required to operate that equipment. If someone's referring to the size of a locomotive proportionate to its full-scale counterpart, they're talking about that locomotive's scale. So there are three main ride-on scales of locomotives. Three-quarter inch scale, which is equal to one-sixteenth scale. One inch scale, which is equivalent to one-twelfth. And one and one-half inch scale, more commonly referred to as inch and a half scale, or 1.6 inch scale. This equipment is one-eighth full size, and it runs on seven and a quarter or seven and one-half inch gauge. Now, many of you who know me know that I actually do own equipment in all three of these common ride-on scales. And I've had many questions asking, why am I starting with four and three-quarter inch gauge, one inch scale? And truthfully, I've got several ways to answer this question. Um, although I do plan to lay all three scales, and I've actually already started on my three and a half inch gauge high line, as well as my separate seven and a half inch gauge ground line, one inch on the ground has always been my biggest dream for a home railroad. I always wanted to run my first steam locomotive, nickel plate 311 on the ground, 
However, my former home club never followed through on their plans to lay one inch on the ground. And in recent years, their high line even fell so far out of disrepair that I just wasn't comfortable running my locomotive anywhere. All this to say, visiting St. Croix Railroad in Wisconsin absolutely re-inspired my lifelong dream of running one inch on the ground. After seeing their comfortable turn radii of their main lines, their beautiful structures and their members' stunning equipment, I knew my first priority was contributing as much one inch track on the ground as I possibly could to this live steam community. Also, one inch scale is just super well suited for a backyard sized locomotive in my opinion, and although I have plenty of space for inch and a half now as well, one inch truly does still have my heart, and I think it deserves its own proper non-dual gauge railroad here on the property. It was definitely super exciting to see this first track section leave the shop and lay down on the fresh ground. Um, I actually built all these sections well over a year ago in the old shop, and I've been using them pretty much constantly as storage tracks, so it'll be super nice to put them outside and put them to good use here. Many folks have also asked what I'm using for rail, and my answer is typically that I haven't decided yet. Uh, so far, this is all just reused 5 8 culp that Dad and I bought from a good friend many years ago who's since passed. Um, I would love to continue with 5 8 if possible, or possibly half-inch rail, um, though I am still looking for a reliable source on that. I'm also seriously pursuing the possibility of extruding my own batch of 1-inch scale rail through a custom die, so I'll definitely have to keep you guys updated on that. If I find access to an EDM machine and can get a die cut, uh, we'll probably go that route. But for now, I've got four sections of track to lay and plenty of ground to level, so that'll keep me busy for a couple of months. So I will admit, I had to add a bunch more ballast through this first section than I thought, and this will actually all be retamped the following morning. Uh, live and learn. I'll raise the dirt pack about another inch for the following track sections. Uh, all that mattered for this first evening to me was making sure that 311 could get outside for some fresh air on our new shop spur, which we did successfully accomplish. I will say there's something incredibly satisfying about doing all the grading, leveling, and tamping by hand. Um, I think it was Ollie Johnston who once said bringing in machines to make the cut would take all the fun out of it. Uh, <laughs> I may feel differently as I get further into the hillside here, but I am thoroughly enjoying the uh, process and the manual labor for now, even into May here when I'm taping the audio for this. It's, it's been a lot of fun. So this whole process was pretty much rinse and repeat for the following track sections. You'll see I'm semi-sorting out my scoops of dirt. This is just because I've saved several shovels of grass and transplanted them to bare spots around the yard that I've been walking on constantly. Um, this was the perfect time of the year to do it. We had tons of rain and all of the grass that I moved took and meshed into the turf really nicely, so um, it's nothing fancy out of this grass isn't a, a beautiful lawn, but it definitely helps with erosion and mud and all that stuff if I can keep the grass, or the soil, I should say, covered with grass. The extra dirt from this section will also eventually be used to level out my future engine house spur on the side of the shop, so I'm mostly just stockpiling this dirt here for later use. While I'm working on moving a few more bags of ballast, I did just want to take a second to thank you all very much for your support on the channel as always. Um, I really just started the channel to document fun run days and projects along the way, and it's turned into an incredible community of folks that I look forward to hearing from and sharing ideas and projects with. Um, that being said, as always, feel free to comment down below and share your experiences or just let me know what you think. And as always, feel free to subscribe as well as follow along. Um, that just allows me to justify putting a bit more time and energy into each video that comes out to you guys. But all in all, just thank you guys all for watching and for following along with this project. I'm super excited to reveal some different aspects of the projects going on around here in the next few videos as well. So stay tuned. Guys, thank you for everybody who's been here from day one to, uh, to everybody new finding out and following along. I, I appreciate you guys. So look forward to, uh, to sharing the process with you. For rail joiners, I'm simply using some scrap aluminum stock, drilling some oversized holes, and leaving room for rail expansion in the sun. The siding in the upcoming section of mainline will really be the only part of my railroad that sees direct sunlight throughout the day, and with Tennessee's summer temperatures as high as they are, I'll be very interested to see how this aluminum rail holds up throughout the season. Well, with the railroad tamped and 311 outside, I think it's time for me to sign off until next time. Thanks for tuning in as always. Cheers, everybody. We'll see you down the line.